Hey everybody, this is Secution. I hope you all are having a good day. Let me just make sure everything is working here real quick. I think it is. Okay. Uh, hi. So, I have been planning some new content for a while now. I enjoy playing games with y'all and doing uh, sort of not the usual, but doing like what a lot of people do. Um, but I want to try to do different things and I psych myself out and I don't do that very much. So today I am doing an experiment. I'm going to read. Uh, if you follow me on other platforms, I read. I read a lot to people. Um, I like doing it. I think it's fun. And I wanted to do it on here because I thought it might be nice content if somebody just wants something to kind of come chill out, listen to, and enjoy a little more reserved and, you know, relaxed. Um, I will do a quick recap. We are still doing the Brain Injury of Awareness Association of Amer uh, the Brain Injury Association of America fundraiser. Uh, that's going to go on all March. Um, the Brain Injury Association of America raises money to help with research, with treatment, and with support for people who have suffered a brain injury. If you're able to support that cause, you can donate through my page. If you're not able to, that's totally fine. I really appreciate it. Um, that cause was shown to me by Prism Splay, who's a really talented streamer and a, a really good person. She raised over $5,000 for charity. And uh, yeah, that was her, that was last year. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, if you've been around my streams a lot, you've seen this room before. This is the library. Um, Tower has a lot of floors and a lot of rooms. Uh, we don't really explore them too much, but I'm going to try to do better with that. This is the library. It's pretty nice. Um, this art I, is from Pixabay. It's, a, it's, it's not a commission piece that I bought, um, but it is free to use as long as you credit, and it is on Pixabay, so... I really like this library. Someday I'd like to have uh, standalone art of just my library, but we're gonna go with this for today. So yeah, I will be on screen with y'all, and if you're wondering like what the heck we're gonna be reading or anything like that, I will get you those details in just a moment. I am going to let folks know that we are doing this. Reading bedtime story. Um, and I know that this content is not necessarily what people really are going to come and vibe for, and that's totally okay. Um, I tend to do very different stuff. Uh, most of what I do is play games and stuff like that, so nobody's under any obligation to hang out for this. It's just something I think is fun. All right, so we're going to do reading Winnie the Winnie the Pooh on Twitch. Okay. So, um, the idea here again is, and I'll still, I'll still check in, I'll still interact with chat. This isn't an ASMR stream. I'm not trying to be an ASMR person. I just thought, you know, I'm going to try to hang out with y'all and read. So this is, um, I got this at my local library. Uh, it was a damaged copy of Winnie the Pooh that is that was, they were selling out because it was too messed up to really keep on the shelves anymore. Um, this is the original story of Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne, uh, and there are little illustrations. I don't really have a way to show you all the illustrations, but if you've ever seen if you've never seen this book, um, it has cute little pictures of Winnie the Pooh. Why I'm, I have other books that I want to read to everybody, but we will go through that, and I'm going to start to read, and I'll check chat periodically. If it takes me a second to respond to you, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just reading, so I'm not going to be seeing chat as quickly as I usually do. So, let's go in here, and we're going to start with chapter one, in which we are introduced to Winnie the Pooh and some bees, and the story begins. Here is Edward the Bear, coming downstairs now, bump, bump, bump on the back of his head with Christopher Robin. 
It is, as far as he knows, the only way of coming downstairs, but sometimes he feels that there really is another way, if only he could stop bumping for a moment and think of it. And then he feels that perhaps there isn't. Anyhow, here he is at the bottom, ready to be introduced to you, Winnie the Pooh. When I first heard his name, I said just as you are going to say, but I thought he was a boy. So did I, said Christopher Robin. Then why didn't you, well, then, why, then you can't call him Winnie. I don't. But you said he's Winnie the year Pooh. Don't you know what there means? Ah, yes, I do. Now I do, I said quickly. And I hope you do too, because it's all the explanation you're going to get. Sometimes Winnie the Pooh likes a game of some sort when he comes downstairs, and sometimes he likes to sit quietly in front of the fire and listen to a story. This evening, what about a story? Said Christopher Robin. What about a story, I said. Could you very sweetly tell Winnie the Pooh one? I suppose I could, I said. But what sort of stories does he like? About himself, because he's that sort of bear. Oh, I see. So could you very sweetly? I'll try, I said. And so I tried. Once upon a time, a very long time ago now, about last Friday, Winnie the Pooh lived in the forest all by himself under the name of Sanders. What does under the name mean? asked Christopher Robin. It means he had the name over the door in gold letters and lived under it. Winnie the Pooh wasn't quite sure, said Christopher Robin. Now I am, said the growly voice. Then I will go on, said I. One day, when he was out walking, he came to an open place in the middle of the forest, and in the middle of this place was a large oak tree, and from the top of the tree there came a loud buzzing noise. Winnie the Pooh sat down at the foot of the tree with his head between his paws and began to think. First of all, he said to himself, that buzzing noise means something. You don't get a buzzing noise like that just buzzing and buzzing without its meaning something. If there's a buzzing noise, somebody's making a buzzing noise, and the only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. Then he thought another long time and said, and the only reason for being a bee that I know of, hey Shameless, welcome in. I'm reading Winnie the Pooh. You're welcome to come and hang out and enjoy a bedtime story. Then he thought another long time and said, and the only reason I know for being a bee is to make honey. And then he got up and he said, and the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. So he began to climb the tree. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And as he climbed, he sang a little song to himself. It went like this. Isn't it funny how a bear likes honey? Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder why he does. Then he climbed a little further and a little further, and then he and then just a little further. By the time he thought of another song. It's a very funny thought that if bears were bees, they'd build their nests at the bottom of trees. And that being so, if the bees were bears, we shouldn't have to climb all these stairs. He was getting rather tired by this time, so that's why he sang a complaining song. He was very late and nearly there now, and he just stood on the branch and cracked. Oh, help, said Pooh as he dropped ten feet on the branch below. If only I hadn't, he said as he bounced twenty feet to the next branch. You see what I meant to do, he explained as he turned head over heels and crashed onto another branch thirty feet below. What I meant to do, of course it was rather, he admitted as he slithered very quickly through the next six branches. It all comes, I suppose, he decided as he said goodbye to the last branch, spun round three times, and flew gracefully into a gorse bush. It all comes of liking honey so much. Oh, help. He crawled out of the gorse bush and brushed prickles from his nose and began to think again. And the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin. Was that me, said Christopher Robin in an awkward voice, hardly daring to believe? That was you. Christopher Robin said nothing, but his eyes got larger and larger and his face got pinker and pinker. So Winnie the Pooh went round to his friend Christopher Robin, who lived behind a green door in another part of the forest. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he said. Good morning, Winnie the Pooh, said you. I wonder if you've got such a thing as a balloon about you. A balloon? Yes, I just said to myself coming along, I wonder if Christopher Robin has such a thing as a balloon about him. 
I just said it to myself, thinking of the balloons and wondering. What do you want a balloon for, you said? Winnie the Pooh looked around to see that nobody was listening, put a paw to his mouth, and said in a deep whisper, Honey. But you don't get honey with balloons. I do, said Pooh. Well, it just so happened that you had been to a party the day before at the house of your friend, Piglet, and you had balloons at the party. You had had a big cream balloon, and one of Rabbit's relations had had a big blue balloon and had left it behind, being really too young to go to a party at all. And so you brought the green one and the blue one home with you. Which one would you like, you asked Pooh. He put his head between his paws and thought very carefully. It's like this, he said. When you go after honey with a balloon, the great thing is not to let the bees know you're coming. Now, if you have a green balloon, they might think you're only part of the tree and not notice you. And if you have a blue balloon, they might think you're part of the sky and not notice you. And the question is, which is most likely? Wouldn't they notice you underneath the balloon, you ask? They might, or they might not, said Winnie the Pooh. You never can tell with bees. He thought for a moment and said, I shall try and look like a small black cloud. That will deceive them. Then you had better have a blue balloon, you said, and so it was decided. Well, you both went out with a blue balloon, and you took your gun with you just in case, as you always did, and Winnie the Pooh went to a very muddy place that he knew and rolled back and forth until he was black all over. And then, when the balloon was blown up as big as big, and you and Pooh were both holding onto the string, you let go suddenly, and Pooh floated gracefully up into the sky and stayed there, level with the top of the tree and about 20 feet away from it. Hooray, you shouted. Isn't that fine, shouted Winnie the Pooh down to you. What do I look like? You look like a bear holding onto a balloon, you said. Not, said Pooh anxiously, not like a small black blue, a black cloud in the sky? Not very much. Ah, well, perhaps from up here it looks different. And as I say, you never can tell with bees. There was no wind to blow him nearer to the tree, so he stayed there. He could see the honey, he could smell the honey, but he couldn't quite reach the honey. After a little while, he called down to you. Christopher Robin, he said in a loud whisper. Hello, I think the bees suspect something. What sort of thing? I don't know, but something tells me that they're suspicious. Perhaps they think you're after their honey. It may be that, you never can tell with bees. There was another little silence, and then he called down to you. Christopher Robin? Give me just a sec. I'm just checking something really quick here. Everything's good. Thanks for your patience, Pebbles. Um, there was another little silence, and then he called down to you again. Christopher Robin? Yes? Have you an umbrella in your house? I think so. I wish you would bring it out here and walk up and down with it and look at me every now and then and say, Tut, tut, it looks like rain. I think if you did that, it would help the deception which we're practicing on these bees. Well, you laughed to yourself, silly old bear, but you didn't say it out loud because you were so fond of him, and you went home for your umbrella. Oh, there you are, called down Winnie the Pooh as you got back to the tree. I was beginning to get anxious. I have discovered that the bees are definitely suspicious. Shall I put my umbrella up, you said. Yes, but wait a moment, we must be practical. The important bee to deceive is the queen bee. Can you see which is the queen bee from down there? No. A pity. Well, now if you walk up and down with your umbrella saying, Tut, tut, it looks like rain, I shall do what I can by singing a little cloud song, such as a cloud might sing. Go. So, while you walked up and down and wondered if it would rain, Winnie the Pooh sang this song. How sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue. Every little cloud always sings aloud. How sweet to be a cloud floating in the blue. It makes him very proud to be a little cloud. The bees were still buzzing suspiciously as ever. Some of them indeed left their nest and flew all around the cloud as it began the second verse of this song. And one bee sat down on the nose of the cloud for a moment and then got up again. Christopher, ouch, Robin, called out the cloud. Yes. I think I have just been thinking, and I have to come to some very important decision. These are the wrong sort of bees. Are they? Quite the wrong sort. So I think they should maybe, would make the wrong sort of honey, shouldn't you? Would they? Yes, so I think I shall come down. How, asked you. Winnie the Pooh hadn't thought about this, 
If he let go of the string, he would fall, bump, and he didn't like the idea of that. So he thought for a long time, and then he said, Christopher Robin, you must shoot the balloon with your gun. Have you got your gun? Of course I have, you said. But if I do that, it will spoil the balloon, you said. But if you don't, said Pooh, I shall have to let go, and you that would spoil me. When you put it like that, you saw how it was, and you aimed very carefully at the balloon and fired. Ow, said Pooh. Did I miss, you asked him? You didn't exactly miss, said Pooh, but you missed the balloon. Oh, I'm so sorry, you said, and you fired again, and this time you hit the balloon, and the air came slowly out, and Winnie the Pooh floated down to the ground. But his arms were so stiff from holding on to the string of the balloon all that time, that they stayed up straight in the air for more than a week, and whenever a fly came and settled on his nose, he had to blow it off, and to think, and I think, but I am not sure, that this is why they always called him Pooh. <laughs> Uh, is that the end of the story, said Christopher Robin? That's the end of that one. There are others. About Pooh and me, and Piglet, and Rabbit, and all of you. Don't you remember? I do remember, and then when I try to remember, I forget. That day, when Pooh and Piglet tried to catch the heffalump, they didn't catch it, did they? No. Pooh couldn't, because he hasn't any brain. Did I catch it? Well, that comes into the story, Christopher Robin nodded. I do remember, he said, only Pooh doesn't do very well. So that's why he likes to have me told to him just again, because then it's a real story and it's not just remembering. That's just how I feel, I said. Christopher Robin gave a deep sigh, picked his bear up by the leg, and walked off to the door, trailing Pooh behind him. At the door, he turned and said, Coming to see me have my bath? I might, I said. I didn't hurt him when I shot him, did I? Not a bit. He nodded and went out, and in a moment I heard Winnie the Pooh bump, 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 going up the stairs behind him. Chapter 2. Pooh Goes Visiting and Gets Into a Tight Place Edward Bear, known to his friends as Winnie the Pooh, or Pooh for short, was walking himself through the forest one day, humming proudly to himself. He had made a little hum that very morning, and he was going to, and he was doing his stoutness exercises in front of the glass. Tra-la-la, tra-la-la, as he stretched up high as he could, and then tra-la-la, tra-la, oh help la as he tried to reach his toes. After breakfast, he had said it over and over to himself until he had learnt it by heart. Now he was humming it right through properly. It went like this. Tra-la-la, 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 tra-la-la. Rum-tum, tiddle-lum-tum, tiddle-little, 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 rum-tum-tum, tiddle-lum. Well, he was humming this hum to himself and walking along gaily, wondering what everybody else was doing and what it felt like being somebody else. When suddenly he came to a sandy bank, and in the bank was a large hole. Aha, said Pooh, rum-tum, tiddle-lum-tum. If I know anything about anything, that hole means rabbit, he said. And rabbit means company, he said. And company means food and listening to be humming and such. Rum-tum, tiddle-lum. So he bent down, put his head in the hole, and called out, is anybody home? There was suddenly a scuffling noise from inside the hole, and then silence. What I said was, is anybody home, called out Pooh very loudly. No, said a voice, and then added, you needn't shout so loud, I heard you quite well the first time. Bother, said Pooh. Isn't there anybody here at all? No. Winnie the Pooh took his head out of the hole and thought for a little, and then he thought to himself, there must be somebody there, because somebody must have said nobody. So he put his head back in the hole and said, Hello, Rabbit, isn't that you? No, said Rabbit, in a different sort of voice this time. But isn't that Rabbit's voice? I don't think so, said Rabbit. It isn't meant to be. Oh, said Pooh. He took his head out of the hole and had another think, and then he put, out, put it back and said, Well, could you very kindly tell me where Rabbit is? He's going to see his friend Pooh Bear, who is a great friend of his. But this is me, said Bear, very much surprised. What sort of me? Pooh Bear. Are you sure, said Rabbit, still more surprised? Quite, quite sure, said Pooh. Oh, well, come in. So Pooh pushed and pushed and pushed his way through the hole, and at last he got in. You were quite right, said Rabbit, looking him all over. It is you. Glad to see you. Who did you think it was? Well, I wasn't sure. You know how it is in the forest. One can't have anybody coming into one's house. 
one has to be careful. What about a mouthful of something? Who always liked a little something at eleven o'clock in the morning? And he was very glad to see Rabbit getting out the plates and mugs. And when Rabbit said, Honey, or condensed milk with your bread? He was so excited that he said, Both. And then, so as not to seem greedy, he added, But don't bother about the bread, please. And for a long time after that, he said nothing. Until at last, humming to himself in a rather sticky voice, he got up, shook Rabbit lovingly by the paw, and said that he must be going on. Must you, Rabbit said politely? Well, I could stay a little longer, if, that is, if, and he tried very hard to look in the direction of the larder. As a matter of fact, said Rabbit, I was going out directly myself. Oh, well then, I must be going. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. If you're in so, if you're sure you won't have any more. Is there any more? asked Pooh quickly. Rabbit took the covers off the dishes and said, no, there wasn't. I thought not, said Pooh, nodding to himself. Well, goodbye. I must be going on. So he started to climb out of the hole. He pulled with his front paws and pushed with his back paws, and a little while later his nose was out in the open again, and then his ears, and then his front paws, and then his shoulder, and then, oh, help, said Pooh. I'd better go back. Oh, bother, said Pooh. I shall have to go on. I can't do either, said Pooh. Oh, help and bother. Now by this time, Rabbit wanted to go for a walk too, and finding the front door full, he went out the back door and came around to Pooh, who looked at him. Hello, are you stuck? No, said Pooh carelessly, just resting and thinking and humming to myself. Here, give us a paw. Pooh Bear stretched out a paw and Rabbit pulled and pulled. Ouch, cried Pooh, you're hurting. The fact is, said Rabbit, you're stuck. It all comes, said Pooh crossly, of not having front doors big enough. It all comes, said Rabbit sternly, of eating too much. I thought at the time, said Rabbit, only I didn't like to say anything, said Rabbit. That one of us was eating too much, said Rabbit, and I knew it wasn't me, he said. Well, well, I shall go and fetch Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin lived at the other end of the forest, and when he came back with Rabbit, he saw the front half of Pooh and said, silly old bear, in such a loving voice that everybody felt quite hopeful again. I was just beginning to think, said the bear, sniffing slightly, that Rabbit might never be able to use his front door again, and I should hate that, he said. So should I, said Rabbit. Use his front door again, said Christopher Robin. Of course I'll use his front door again. Good, said Rabbit. If we can't pull you out, Pooh, we might push you back. Rabbit scratched his whiskers thoughtfully and pointed out that once Pooh was pushed back, he was back. And of course, nobody was glad to see Pooh went then more... <clears throat> once Pooh was pushed back, he was back. And of course, nobody was more glad to see Pooh than he was. Still, there it was. Some lived in trees, some lived underground, and... You mean I'd never get out, said Pooh? I mean, said Rabbit, that having got so far, it seems a pity to waste it. Christopher Robin nodded. Then there's only one thing to get done. We shall have to wait for you to get thin again. How long does, taking thin does getting thin take, asked Pooh anxiously. About a week, I should think. But I can't stay here for a week. You can stay here all right, silly old bear. It's getting you out, which is so difficult. We'll read to you, said Rabbit cheerfully, and I hope it won't snow, he added. And I say, old fellow, you're making a good deal of room in my house. Do you mind if I use your back legs as a tr as a towel horse? I mean, because they're, there they are, doing nothing. It would be very convenient just to hang towels on them. A week, said Pooh gloomily. What about meals? I'm afraid no meals, said Christopher Robin, because of getting thin quicker. But then we will read to you. Bear began to sigh, and then he found he couldn't because he was tightly stuck, and a tear rolled down his eye, as he said, Then would you read the sustaining book, such as it would be a great comfort, a wedged bear in great tightness? So for a week Christopher Robin read the sort of book at that north end, at the north end of Pooh, and Rabbit hung his washing on the south end, and in between the bear himself was getting slenderer and slenderer, and at the end of the week Christopher Robin said, Now! So he took hold of Pooh and Pooh's front paws and Rabbit took hold of Christopher Robin and all of Rabbit's friends and relations took hold of Rabbit and they all pulled together and for a long time Pooh only said ow and oh and then all of a sudden he said pop just as if a cork were coming out of a bottle and Christopher Robin and Rabbit and all of Rabbit's friends and relations went head over heels backwards and over the top of them came Winnie the Pooh free at last. So with nods and thanks to his friends, he went on through his walk through the forest, 
humming proudly to himself, for Christopher Robin looked after him lovingly and said to himself, Silly old bear. Silly old bear. Chapter 3, in which Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. The piglet lived in a very grand house in the middle of a beech tree, and the beech tree was in the middle of a forest, and the piglet lived in the middle of the house. Next to his house was a piece of broken board which said, Trespassers W on it. When Christopher Robin asked Piglet what it meant, he said it was his grandfather's name and had been in the family for a very long time. Christopher Robin said you couldn't spell Trespassers W, and Piglet said yes you could, because his grandfather was, and it was for Trespassers Will, which was short for Trespassers William, and his grandfather had had two names in case he lost one, Trespassers after an uncle, and William after Trespassers. I've got two names, said Christopher Robin carelessly. Well, there you are, that proves it, said Piglet. One fine winter's day, when Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of his house, he happened to look up, and there was Winnie the Pooh. Pooh was walking around and around in a circle, thinking of something else, and when Piglet called to him, he just went on walking. Hello, said Piglet. What are you doing? Hunting, said Pooh. Hunting what? Tracking something, said Winnie the Pooh very mysteriously. Tracking what? said Piglet, coming closer. That's just what I was to ask myself. I ask myself what? What do you think? Well, when do you think you'll have the answer? I shall have to wait until I catch up with it, said Winnie the Pooh. Now look there, he pointed to the ground in front of him. What do you see there? Tracks, said Piglet. Paw marks, he gave a little squeak of excitement. Oh, Pooh, do you think it's a, a, a woozle? It may be, said Pooh. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. You never can tell with paw marks. With those few words, he went on tracking, and Piglet, after watching him for a minute or two, ran after him. Winnie the Pooh had come to a sudden stop and was bending over the tracks in a puzzled sort of way. What's the matter? asked Piglet. It's a very funny thing, said the bear. But there seem to be two animals now. This whatever it was has been joined by another whatever it is, and the two of them are now proceeding in company. Would you mind coming with me, Piglet, in case they turn out to be hostile anim animals? Piglet scratched his ear in a nice sort of way and said that he had nothing to do until Friday and would be delighted to come in case it really was a woozle. You mean in case it really is two woozles, said Winnie the Pooh, and Piglet said that anyhow he had nothing to do until Friday, so off they went together. There was a small, spinnery larch of trees just here, and it seemed that if the two woozles, if that is what they were, had been going in this spinnery, so round the spinney went Pooh and Piglet after them. Piglet, passing the time by telling Pooh what his grandfather Trespassers W had done to remove stiffness after tracking, and how his grandfather Trespassers W had suffered in his later years from shortness of breath and other matters of interest, and Pooh wondering what a grandfather was like, and if perhaps this was two grandfathers they were after now, and if so, whether he would be allowed to take one home and keep it, and what Christopher Robin would say. And still the tracks went on in front of them. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped and pointed excitedly in front of him. Look! What? said Piglet, with a jump. And then to show that he hadn't been frightened, he jumped up and down once or twice in an exercising sort of way. The tracks! A third animal has joined the other two. Pooh! cried Piglet. Do you think it's another woozle? No, said Pooh, because it makes a different mark. It's either two woozles and one, as it might be whizzle, or two, as it might be whizzles, and one, if so it is, woozle. Let us continue to follow them. So they went on, feeling a little anxious now in case the three animals in front of them were, hot, were of hostile intent, and Piglet wished very much that his grandfather T.W. were here instead of everywhere else. And Pooh thought of how nice it would be if they met Christopher Robin suddenly, but quite accidentally, and only because he liked Christopher Robin so much. And then all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh stopped again and licked the tip of his nose in a, cool, in a cooling manner, for he was feeling more than a little hot and anxious than ever before in his life. There were four animals in front of them. Do you see, Piglet? He said, looking down at Look at their tracks. Three, as it were, woozles, and one, as it is, whizzle. Another woozle has joined them. And so it seemed to be. There were the tracks, crossing over each other, getting muddled up with each other, 
but quite, pl but quite plainly every now and then the tracks of four sets of paws. I think, said Piglet, when he had licked the tip of his nose too, and found it brought very little comfort, I think that I just remembered something. I have just remembered something that I forgot to do yesterday, and I shan't be able to do tomorrow, so I suppose I really ought to go back and do it now. We'll do it this afternoon, and I'll come with you, said Pooh. It isn't the sort of thing that you can do in the afternoon, said Piglet quickly. It's a very particular morning thing, and it has to be done in the morning, and if possible between the hours of, what would you say the time is? About twelve, said Winnie the Pooh, looking at the sun. Between, as I was about to say, the hours of twelve and twelve five. So really, dear old Pooh, if you'll excuse me, what's that? Pooh looked up at the sky, and then as he heard the whistle again, he looked up in the branches of a big oak tree, and then he saw a friend of his. It's Christopher Robin, he said. Ah, then you'll be all right, said Piglet. You'll be quite safe with him. Goodbye, and he trotted off at home as quickly as he could, very glad to be out of danger again. Christopher Robin came slowly down his tree. Silly old bear, what were you doing? First you went round and around the spinning twice by yourself, and then Piglet ran after you and went around and around again, and then you were just going around and around a fourth time. Wait a moment, said Winnie the Pooh, holding up his paw. He sat down and he thought in the most thoughtful way he could think. Then he fitted his paw into one of the tracks, and then he scratched his nose twice and stood up. Yes, said Winnie the Pooh. I see now, said Winnie the Pooh. I have been foolish and deluded, said he. I am a bear of no brain at all. You're the best bear in all the world, said Christopher Robin soothingly. Am I, said Pooh, hopefully. And then he brightened up suddenly. Anyhow, he said, it's nearly luncheon time. And so he went home for it. And that was chapter four. This is chapter three. That was chapter three. This is chapter four. Eeyore loses a tail, and Pooh finds one. The old gray donkey Eeyore stood by himself in a thistly corner of the forest, his front feet well apart, his head on one side, and thought about things. Sometimes he thought sadly to himself, why? And sometimes he thought, wherefore? And sometimes he thought, inasmuch as which? And sometimes he didn't quite know what he was thinking about. So when Winnie the Pooh came jumping along, Eeyore was very glad to be able to stop thinking for a little while in order to say, how do you do, in a gloomy manner to him. And how are you, said Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore shook his head from side to side. Not very how, he said. I don't have time, I don't seem to have felt an all how for a long time. Dear, dear, said Pooh, I'm sorry about that. Let's have a look at you. So Eeyore stood there, gazing sadly at the ground, and Winnie the Pooh walked all around him once. Why, what's happened to your tail, he said in surprise. What's ha what has happened to it, said Eeyore. It isn't there. Are you sure? Well, either a tail is there or it isn't there. You can't make a mistake about it, and yours isn't there. Then what is it? Nothing. Let's have a look, said Eeyore. And he turned around to the place where his tail had been a little while ago, and then finding that he couldn't quite catch it up, he turned around the other way, until he came back to where he was at first, and then he put his head down and looked between his front legs, and at last he said with a long, sad sigh, I believe you're right. Of course I'm right, said Pooh. The accounts for, this accounts for a good deal, said Eeyore gloomily. It explains everything. No wonder. You must have left it somewhere, said Winnie the Pooh. Somebody must have taken it, said Eeyore. How like them, he added after a long silence. Pooh felt that he ought to say something helpful about it, but he didn't quite know what, so he decided to do something helpful instead. Eeyore, he said solemnly, I, Winnie the Pooh, will find your tail for you. Thank you, Pooh, answered Eeyore. You're a real friend, he said, not like some. So Winnie the Pooh went off to find Eeyore's tail. It was a fine spring morning in the forest as he started out. Little soft clouds played happily in the blue sky, skipping from time to time in, in the sun, as if they had to come, as if they had come to put it out, and then sliding away suddenly so that the next might have his turn. Through them and between them, the sun shone bravely, and a copse, which had first worn its furs all year round, seemed old and dowdy. Now, beside the green lace with the beeches had put on so prettily, through copse and spinney marched Bear. 
Down open slopes of gorse and, he and heather, over rocky beds of streams, up steep banks of sandstone, into the heather again, and so at last, tired and hungry, so the hundred acre wood, for it was the hundred acre wood that Owl lived in. And if anyone knows anything about anything, the bear said to himself, it's Owl, who knows something about something, or my name's not Winnie the Pooh, he said, which it is, he added. So there you are. Owl lived at the Chestnuts, an old world residence of great charm, which was grander than anybody else's, or seemed so to the bear, because it had both a knocker and a bell pull. Underneath the knocker was a notice which read, Please ring if answer is required. Underneath the bell pull there was a notice which said, Please knock if answer is not required. Those notices had been written by Christopher Robin, who was the only one in the forest who could spell. For Owl, wise though he was in many ways, able to read and write and spell his own name, W-O-L, yet somehow went all to pieces over the most delicate words like measles and buttered toast. Winnie the Pooh read the two notices very carefully, first from left to right, and then afterwards, in case he had missed some of it, from right to left. Then, to make quite sure, he knocked and pulled the knocker, and he pulled and knocked the bell rope, and he called out in a very loud voice, Owl, I require an answer. It's Bear speaking. And the door opened, and Owl looked out. Hello, Pooh, he said. How are things? Terrible and sad, said Pooh, because Eeyore, who is a friend of mine, has lost his tail, and he's moping about it. So could you very kindly tell me how to find it for him? Well, said Owl, the customary procedures in such a case is as follows. What does crustimony prods seed cake mean, said Pooh, for I am a bear of very little brain, and long words bother me. It means the thing to do. As long as it means that, I don't mind, said Pooh humbly. The thing to do is as follows. First, issue a reward. Then, just a moment, said Pooh, holding up his paw. What do we do with this? What were you calling it? You sneezed just as you were going to tell me. I didn't sneeze. Yes, you did. You just sneezed, Owl. Excuse me, Pooh, I didn't. You can't sneeze without knowing it. Well, you can't know it without something having... Been, well, you can't know it without something having been sneezed. What I said was, first issue a reward. You're doing it again, said Pooh sadly. A reward, said Owl very loudly. We write a notice to say that we will give a large something to anybody who finds Eeyore's tail. I see, I see, said Pooh, nodding his head. Talking about a large something, he went on dreamily. I generally have a small something about now, about this time in the morning. And he looked wistfully at the cupboard in the corner of Owl's parlor. Just a mouthful of condensed milk or whatnot, with perhaps a lick of honey. Well then, said Owl, we write out this notice, and we put it up all over the forest. A lick of honey, murmured Bear to himself, or, or not, as the case may be. He gave a deep sigh, and he tried very hard to listen to Owl, what Owl was saying. But Owl went on and on, using longer and longer words, until at last he came back to what started, and he explained that the person to write out this notice was Christopher Robin. It was he who wrote the ones on my front door for me. Did you see them, Pooh? For some time now, Pooh had been saying yes and no in turn, with his eyes shut, to all that Owl was saying. And having said yes, yes, last time, he said no, not at all. Now, without really knowing what Owl was talking about. Didn't you see them, said Owl, a little surprised. Come and look at them now. So they went outside, and Pooh looked at the knocker and the notice below, and he looked at the bell rope and the notice below. And the more he looked at the bell rope, the more he felt he had been seeing something like it somewhere, sometime before. Handsome bell rope, isn't it, said Owl? Pooh nodded. It reminds me of something, he said, but I can't think what. Where did you get it? I just came across it in the forest. It was hanging over a bush. I thought at first somebody lived there, so I rang it, and nothing happened. And then I rang it again, and very loudly, it came off in my hand. And as nobody seemed to want it, I took it home, and Owl, said Pooh solemnly, you made a mistake. Somebody did want it. Who? Eeyore, my dear friend Eeyore. He was, he was fond of it. Fond of it? Attached to it, said Winnie the Pooh sadly. So with these words, he unhooked it and carried it back to Eeyore. 
and when Christopher Robin had nailed it into the right place again, Eeyore frisked about the forest, waving his tail so happily that Winnie the Pooh came over all funny and had to hurry home for a little snack of something to sustain him. And wiping his mouth half on the, half an hour afterwards, he sang to himself proudly, Pooh found the tail, I said Pooh, at a quarter to two. Only it was a quarter to eleven, really. I found the tail. So that is the first four chapters of the original Winnie the Pooh uh, by A.A. A. Millen. Uh, again, I'm new to the reading streams. I'm going to try to keep these short. Uh, I don't want to do like super, super long ones. The idea is that, you know, maybe like come in and vibe and hang out and uh, read a little bit, get a few chapters of something or, you know, that way when it goes up on YouTube, if you're having trouble getting to sleep, you can listen to this and hopefully it helps. Uh, I hope that if anybody is watching this on Twitch, this was a nice vibe for you. And if you're watching this to try to fall asleep, I will grab a quote. I really like Winnie the Pooh. It's something that I have always enjoyed Winnie the Pooh. Um, I really like the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It's one of my favorite things to watch, and it remains so today. So I'm going to give you all a Winnie the Pooh quote, and maybe it'll help. You're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Pebbles, all of you are amazing, and I hope that you are kind to yourselves, and I'm very, very proud of you. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. We will do something more traditional. Uh, we'll probably play a game or something like that. Thanks for hanging out today. I will go ahead and end stream. Remember to hydrate. And until next time, play more games and be safe. Good night.